Welcome back to my COVID vaccine question and answer session. What's really cool about this particular question is that it's about a very important topic and that it was asked twice, once in my June session and once in my September session. And you can really see how much richer my answer became in the September session, essentially reflecting how much scientific progress we have made in a short three months. And now that we're in December 2021, scientific knowledge has probably increased even further. So if you know of any updates to answering this question, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. So in this video, I will give my answer to the question of which is better, natural immunity or vaccine immunity. In the future, I'll make a video debunking misinformation about this topic. So make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to stay tuned for that video. Also, if you're enjoying these videos and learning something, make sure to hit the like button too to help more viewers on YouTube find these videos. Thanks, and let's get started. Why get the vaccine if you have tested positive for COVID? Would you not already have the antibodies, which would be better than a vaccine? If you got COVID, the amount of antibodies that you have is going to be far less than a full series of vaccinations can give you. And they've actually measured this. So there's, there, so, so I've actually read the papers that have measured this. Um, and also, when you have had COVID, the immune memory response against that is going to be messy compared with when you have the vaccine against COVID. With a vaccine against the virus, we have the vaccine producing in your bodies a very specific part of the virus particle called the spike protein, which is actually very specific to the coronavirus. And so your, your immune system will be specific for COVID. It also protects you against variants because when you have a when you have the entire spike protein, only parts of the spike protein mutate at any given given time to give you the different variants. There's other parts of the spike protein that's conserved between all the variants. And so if you build up antibodies against all the different parts of the spike protein, that can actually confer a degree of immunity against multiple different types of variants, regardless of what comes up. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that artificially aged clip from June 2021. Now let's watch my answer to the same question in September to see how much science has changed and how much our knowledge of these vaccines has improved. Before we do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to a scientist who consistently produces reliable information. This person is known online as your local epidemiologist. They have a master's in public health as well as a PhD in epidemiology. So I'll post a link to her content down below. A large part of my answer in the subsequent clip is based on her content. Check it out. Isn't natural immunity as good as the vaccines? And if an antibody test shows immunity, can a doctor give a vaccine exemption? Comments about how natural immunity is as good as a vaccine-based immunity is misinformation, and there, and there are many reasons for this. This relates to a question that was previously sent in. The question was, I had COVID, the Delta variant, at the beginning of August. Since I had COVID, why should I get the COVID vaccine? Why is me getting vaccinated better than me having had COVID? I have seen the reply, we don't know how long immunity lasts. Well, then wouldn't that apply to the vaccine as well? Why do we think immunity from the vaccine lasts any longer than having COVID? So duration of immunity is only part of the answer here. Okay, so since we're talking about duration, we'll cover that part first. Duration of immunity, the duration will wane regardless of whether you've been vaccinated or whether you've been infected. The thing is, if you've been infected naturally, the duration of immune protection you'll have is less predictable than the duration of immune protection that you'll get from the vaccine. Some people with natural infection can have a, a kind of protection that lasts a long time, months and months. Some people can have protection that only lasts a few weeks. And in terms of the duration of immunity of the vaccinations, that's why there's booster shots. So Israel is giving third doses as we speak to everybody. That's why the U.S. also expanded their third dose qualification to not just the immunocompromised and the elderly, but also people who work in high-risk jobs like doctors and teachers. That's how you prolong the duration of immunity uh, with vaccines is you get booster shots. And booster shots aren't new. As adults, we need tetanus shots every 10 years to prevent ourselves from getting tetanus. Um, kids, in, uh, kids when, they're, when they're getting their vaccine series, 
they need multiple doses of the MMR vaccines. You can prolong the duration of immunity of vaccines by getting booster shots. It's not a new concept at all. And I will put it to you that you do not want to get your duration of immunity protected by getting yourself infected again. What we've seen from the data is that people who get reinfected, oftentimes the, the reinfection will be a lot worse than the original infection, especially if the original infection was mild. And then, of course, we all, we all probably heard about what happened in Edson when they had that COVID party where a lot of people ended up in ICU because of that. You definitely don't want to get reinfected. I think that's enough with the duration of immunity. Duration of immunity is one component. The other component, and I would put it to you, is this is it's the more important component, is the actual strength of the immune protection that's protecting you. You're protected not only by the number of antibodies against COVID, but also the types of antibodies against COVID. With a natural infection, the amount of antibodies that you'll make against COVID is far less than the amount of antibodies that you'll get from a vaccine-based protection. There's countless studies confirming this, that the number of antibodies is much, much greater. I think there's only one preprint that suggests the number of antibodies is higher in, in a natural infection, and it's a, it's a preprint. It hasn't been subject to review, editing, so uh, those kind of data are not what scientists use to make conclusions. So that's, that's, that, that's, that's the number of antibodies. Now, there's also very fascinating studies looking at the types of antibodies. Now, I know when we spoke last time, I did say that the, the antibody response to a natural infection is more messy. What does that messy mean? We know more about that now. What that means is that we have a lot of antibodies, different types of antibodies being made against all parts of the virus, from the protein and carbohydrate and, and fatty capsule of the virus to one part of the spike protein. Now, the spike protein is huge. It's got multiple parts in it. And so some of the studies have looked at, in a natural infection, because you have all this other stuff going on, all, all these other types of antibodies being made against different parts of the virus, there's only one antibody that targets the spike protein itself. And the spike protein is the by far the most important part of the virus because that's what the virus uses to get into cells. And so to combat the virus, we need to target the spike protein. So natural infection only produces one type of antibody against the spike protein. Whereas with our vaccines, our vaccines contain the instructions on how to make the entire spike protein. And so once the vaccine is administered, your body makes the entire spike protein and only the entire spike protein. And what happens is all of that abundant immune response gets targeted to the spike protein. So we actually end up making multiple different types of antibodies targeting different regions of the spike protein. And that's great because we know that when COVID mutates and creates these variants, different parts of the spike protein is what creates these variants. So it would behoove us to want to have an antibody immune response that targets multiple parts of the spike protein instead of just one part of the spike protein to be able to protect us not just from this strain of COVID, but from future strains of COVID. And there will be future strains of COVID, unfortunately. So this is why natural immunity to one variant might not protect you against other variants, but immunity that you can get from vaccination can protect you against this variant in a much better way, but it can also protect you against other variants as well. So that wasn't very eloquently put, but I hope that addresses the concerns about natural immunity once and for all, because really the folks that are promoting it is, is really just spreading misinformation out there. And again, they're, they're cherry picking their data. Go back to that list of resources that I gave you about how to identify misinformation. They're, they are cherry picking their data. And so uh, if you have any questions, you can actually ask your, your physician about this. And there's some very good resources out there that, that do explain this very, very well. So I'll link you to one of those. And that's it, everybody. Hope you enjoyed my two clips from June and from September on this important question of which one is better, natural immunity or vaccine-based immunity. I hope that this video has empowered you to make a more informed decision about the COVID-19 vaccines. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. See you in the next video.